before we go any further, allow me to quickly acknowledge a few of our distinguished participants. And I'll start with the Honorable Favor Williams, the Portfolio Minister with Responsibility for Education, Youth, and Information. We also have Senator the Honorable Leslie Campbell, our Minister of State in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. We also have our patron and our host, our Consul General here in New York, that's Mrs. Alcyon Wilson. And you also, we also have Mr. Oliver Meir, who is also joining us as another Consul General who is in Miami. Our distinguished ambassadors were also joining us live. We also have some donors. I will share further in the vote of thanks. But we also have our staff at the consulate and we have our own technical team here from Jampro who are responsible for streaming this event live. Fellow Jamaicans in the diaspora, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. So today is the virtual launch of our tablet and laptop initiative. The project is entitled Advice for Every Child, Bridging the Digital Divide. And to start things off, I'm going to invite Mr. Corey White, who is our vice consul, who is going to open with a word of prayer. Thank you very much, Mr. Master of Ceremonies. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, all viewers. We, of course, want to start on the right proceedings, so we will start by asking for God's reverence with us. Let us pray. Most righteous and heavenly Father, we want to thank you for gathering us all here today virtually. You see and you know the challenges that we are experiencing, Lord, the challenges which have caused us to have this initiative, Lord, the challenges which has been brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic. We want to first thank you and acknowledge you for guiding and protecting us thus far. It has been a challenging year for the country of, the blessed country of Jamaica and our diasporans all over the world, particularly here in the United States. We ask that you just continue to guide and provide journeying mercies for each and every one of us here. We pray at this time for all the participants on this call, all the stakeholders involved, with the, min the ministries of education, headed by the minister, ministries, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Consulate General, or various diplomatic missions all over the world, Lord. We ask that you just provide the guidance needed so that we all as the numerous stakeholders can execute this initiative very seamlessly. We pray at this time, Lord, for the intended beneficiaries, the target numbers, the target num the persons that we're targeting, the students at the primary and secondary level in Jamaica. We pray that we will be able to meet our target and in fact exceed our target so that our students home, at home in Jamaica can benefit and are able to realize their fullest dream and potential of becoming successful students. You see and you know that the challenges that the pandemic has brought about and the difficulties which many students in Jamaica have in accessing the various online platform facilities. And as such, Lord, we ask that this initiative will meet its target. We pray at this time for this afternoon's proceedings, the various speakers which are, who are coming on. We ask that it will be a very seamless program, we will not, that we will not have any technical difficulties and that everything we say and do today will be according to your honor and glory. Amen. And as church going folks, we all say, amen. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. White, um, for delivering that opening prayer. So now we're off on a good start. And at this um, point, we're going to invite our consul general. Uh, but even before sh she arrives, we have uh, some inspirational words from a very important uh, superstar in, um, within our midst. 
we have with us, and if you've um, known about salt and pepper, I will need to go no further. So we'll now play a video um, with a very special welcome from a very special lady, um, Madam Pepper. What's up, my fellow Jamaicans? This is your girl, Pepper from Salt and Pepper. I am elated to be a part of this wonderful initiative to partner with the consulate in acquiring tablets and laptops for the students in Jamaica. We all know the impact that the COVID-19 pandemic is having on our children in Jamaica. I am therefore making a passionate plea for our contribution to ensure that no student is left behind. In doing so, we can ensure a brighter future for them all. Thank you so very much, Madam Pepo. We're certainly feeling very warm right now. Uh, before we go any further, we're, go we're going to now invite our minister, Senator the Honorable Leslie Campbell, who has responsibility for the diaspora portfolio as well. He'll be bringing greetings on the behalf of Senator the Honorable Kamina Johnson-Smith, our Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. Um, Senator Campbell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Honorable Favel Williams, um, and I'll just go through the names as I, as I see them. Honorable Favel Williams, Minister of Education, Youth and Information. Um, I see our own Ambassador Marcia Gilbert Roberts, our permanent, permanent secretary. Mrs. Alcyon Wilson, our Consul General uh, of Jamaica in New York. And I see my friend, Mr. Oliver Mayer, Consul General of Jamaica in Miami. Uh, Ms. Leslie Ann Samuel, the President of the Union of Jamaica Alumni Association. And Mr. Houston Monocure, Managing Director of Bluefield Bay Villas. Um, I see my friend, Ms. Latoya Harris, representative of National Environment uh, Education Trust, and representative of the Jamaican government, and are valuable members of the diaspora and friends of Jamaica. It is my great pleasure to bring you warm greetings on behalf of the Senator Honorable Kamina Johnson-Smith, our Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. And I, when I say warm, you know, because I would not have been able to say this uh, two weeks ago because we had so much rainfall, but it has warmed up very nicely. Um, on the launch of the Government of Jamaica as a device for every child, bridging the Di digital divide initiative, being piloted by the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information. I am particularly pleased to join you as this is the first time that I have had an opportunity to meet with you albeit virtually, since my appointment as Minister of State in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, where I have responsibility for diaspora affairs. Unfortunately, the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic have made it difficult for us to meet face-to-face -face at this time. However, I hope that in the not too distant future, we'll be able to meet on a more personal level. I also sincerely hope that you, your staff and families will remain safe and well during this difficult time. Over the years, the government of Jamaica has actively pursued efforts to strengthen its mutually beneficial partnership with you, our Jamaican family and friends of Jamaica all across the world. We have been assiduously working towards the finalization of a national diaspora policy to lay the foundation for a symbiotic partnership with all of our diasporans, no matter where they reside. We're also seeking to strengthen our diaspora engagement through the establishment of the Global Diaspora Council, which will help to drive the objectives of the policy towards the, the attainment of the Sustainable Development Goals and Jamaica's Long-Term Development Plan, Vision 2030. I was pleased, therefore, to have presided over my first meeting with the Council last week. We are embarking on a robust program of engagement on critical development issues. I'm very much aware that over the years, many Jamaicans have benefited in individually or, at a community, uh, or as a community from the philanthropic endeavors of the diaspora, including in the field of education. This has resulted in the acquisition of well-needed and deeply appreciated tangible support 
for our nation's children, including the more vulnerable students. Your contributions have certainly complemented the government's effort to provide a quality education for its children. Propelled by the current challenges wrought by COVID-19 pandemic, the government has been exploring various avenues to address the numerous and sometimes daunting economic and social challenges facing our beautiful island home. Including among these challenges is the impact on school attendance and the need to now utilize e-learning platforms across the primary and secondary education system, as well as the tertiary level to ensure that no child is left behind. Sadly, however, well over 100,000 children are currently disadvantaged as they are without electronic devices required, required for this online process. I know that Minister Williams, who is leading the charge on this important initiative, will shortly update you on the status of remote learning in Jamaica. I am mindful and very encouraged by the eagerness of many of you to support Jamaica's efforts to build back stronger in the wake of the devastating impact of COVID-19 pandemic on our socioeconomic welfare. It is my fervent hope, therefore, that you, our Jamaican family and reliable friends of Jamaica, will once again extend the hand of friendship and goodwill in whatever way possible in support of this most worthy initiative to ensure equity in access to technology-based learning in support of tomorrow's leaders. I am absolutely confident that working together, we'll be able to overcome. I thank you for partnering, partnering in this important initiative and extend my best wishes in all your endeavors. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Campbell. Certainly, we are convinced that together in partnership and friendship, we can achieve absolutely marvelous things. At this stage, we're now going to invite our Consul General, that's the Consul General of Jamaica to New York, as Mrs. Alcyon Wilson, who will also give us an overview in terms of the project here in New York. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Consul General Williams, please. First, I'm going to thank my very good friend, um, Pepper, from the group Salt and Pepper for her kind words. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, before I go any further, though, um, let me also start by acknowledging um, the minister with portfolio responsibility for today's launch, who is none other than the Honorable Favor Williams, uh, Minister of Education, Youth and Information. Our minister with responsibility for diaspora engagement, Senator, Senator the Honorable Leslie Campbell, Minister of State, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. In representation of our Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Senator the Honorable Kamina Johnson Smith. Ambassador Marcia Gilbert Roberts, as we affectionately call her PS, um, Ambassador is our PS in our Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. Her Excellency, Audrey Marks, our ambassador in Washington, DC. My colleague, Mr. Oliver Mayer, the Council General of Florida and an additional 12 states. Ms. Latoya Harris, Director Donor of Partnership Management at the National Educational Trust. And of course, Ms. Leslie M. Samuel, President of Union of Jamaica Alumni Association, better known as UJA. Mr. Houston Manchur, Managing Director of Bluefield Villers, and our esteemed sponsors and friends of Jamaica. The staff, of course, at the consulate, including the technical team from Jampro, and fellow Jamaicans in the diaspora, good afternoon. I am extending Thankful, a heartful thank you to everyone for tuning in today for this virtual launch of the tablet and laptop initiative, which is entitled A Device for Every Child Bridging the Digital Divide. This is a project that is very close and dear to my heart, given its connection to education and educating our children 
at the, nas at the nation's national level. We are coming to you live from our consulate here based in Manhattan, as well as on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. We're also on our ministry's Facebook page as well. We're pleased to announce that today's virtual launch has been held under the hospices of the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information in partnership with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, the Consulate General of Jamaica, New York, and the National Educational Trust. Of course, our mission across the globe are also our, our, our missions, missions across the globe are joining in as well. Certainly, the only way forward is by placing all hands on deck. Today's virtual tablet and laptop launch comes amidst an unprecedented global pandemic that was negatively impacted, as a negatively impacted all of us. Sadly, though, COVID-19 has left no stone, stones unturned. In light of its dismantling effect on our traditional forms of educating, resulting in a massive school closure across the globe. Jamaica, of course, is no exception. Approximately 600,000 students in 3,699 public and private schools from early childhood to territory level have been impacted. Minister Williams will expound on this further. My fellow Jamaicans and friends of Jamaica, the urgency of securing hundreds of thousands of remote learning devices is therefore not only a noble cause, but the most urgent need to ensure that the precious little ones are not left behind in today's virtual classroom. And this is against the backdrop of the fact that many are already at risk and marginalized. Only the educated are empowered and only the educated are free these are the marching orders which we have taken from the motto of the Union of Jamaica Alumni Association, UJA. Therefore, let me share with you how we intend with your collective support to achieve this goal as laid out in our partnership project in securing 70,000 tablets and 30,000 laptops for our students in Jamaica. Here in New York, we are actively pursuing partnerships with all our diasporans and friends of Jamaica in all corners and corporate public and the public domain in an effort to mobilize the resources necessary to finance this project. To finance this project, we will need to raise several million dollars and that's US dollars. I am fully aware that we are all going through a rough time. Many of us have, many of us have lost loved ones, including myself. Many of us have also lost jobs and our livelihoods, our livelihoods have been severely affected. But what if each one of us would consider giving towards this life challenging dream. If, if we did, then I'm certain that beyond the shadow of a doubt, we will meet and exceed our goals. Ladies and gentlemen, our children's future is dependent on our actions here today. If we do not find a way to keep them academically engaged, then we run the risk of being complicit and a lost generation. At present, we have managed to work out an agreement with a remarkable company here in the US by the name of Best Buy. As, as our prospective partner and supplier, 
to ensure the provision of the required remote learning devices at a very special rate at only 100 US dollars per tablet and 420 US dollars per laptop. This deal though, will only take us through next week, Thursday. At the same time, we're covering all bases in working out a lasting partnership with our corporate friend, Best Buy. This virtual event therefore extends itself, not just to launch the initiative, a device for every children, for a device for every child, bridging the digital divide, but to ensure that due recognition is given to our wonderful donors and supporters who are partnering with us today. For donations, a check should be made payable to the Jamaican, the Jamaica Consulate General, New York, and can be delivered to us Mondays through Fridays between the hours of 8 and 4 p.m. And via post, donors can also mail a check or money order to us here at the Jamaica Consulate and the address is 767 Third Avenue, New York, New York, 10017, and we are on the third floor. If you wish to purchase a new device, the consulate will be happy to receive the unit. Or if you wish to purchase new devices, the consulate will be also happy to receive the units. For shipment to Jamaica, we'll provide the ship, the shipping call, the, we'll provide the shipper and you will need to contact us for the required specs. I speak to you today from my heart because I was once one of these children that were in need of help. I do understand the difficulty that these children are facing. Having been homeless myself in my earlier years, and without a support system. Of course, thanks to the support and the charitable gifts from an organization by the name of the Catholic Charities, better known as Under 21, I was able to free and empower myself through, continued, through continuing my education in an, from the academic level. It is from this personal perspective that I can objectively say to you today that our children are in need of our collective support here and now. It is only through our collective actions can our students free and empower themselves and, and to secure the future they truly really deserve. Again, let me convey my immense gratitude to all the individuals, organizations, companies that have contributed their collective support to the tablet and laptop initiative. In three days, we have managed to collect $87,000, 87 dollars, 87 US, 87,000 US dollars which certainly is an impressive figure. But of course, we are far away from our dream. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask you to, or I implore you to come in this journey with us so that we can secure these devices for our children. Thank you so much and please have a nice day. A special thank you to the Consul General of Jamaica in New York, Mrs. Alcyon Wilson, for such a most moving presentation. Uh, certainly our heart, our, not only our heart, but certainly our minds are more focused in terms of the urgency of this project. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're also going to be 
and, uh, and we're receiving word uh, at this very moment that we have other donors, including Peppa, who just gave us that very warm Jamaican welcome, who already has committed to giving um, her own donation. Um, and it's within that context that we quickly say that if you feel impressed to donate at this moment in time, please feel free to do so. We welcome this um, effort. The Consul General of Jamaica uh, to Miami, Mr. Oliver Meir, will now bring greetings from his jurisdiction. Ladies and gentlemen, Consul, Ma I'm Consul General Meir. All right, good afternoon, everybody. It's a afternoon. pleasure to be here. I just want to quickly recognize our hardworking Minister of Education, Youth and Information, Honorable Favor Williams, our own minister, my very good friend, Senator the Honorable Leslie Campbell. Welcome, sir. Welcome to the ministry. Looking forward to having you up here with us in person as soon as the, the COVID allows. Um, our hardworking permanent secretary, Ambassador Gilbert Roberts, thank you for all that you do. My fellow CG, Alcyon Will Wilson, thank you for your, your inspiring words. I, I, I noticed uh, my good friend Latoya Harris, Leslie and Samuels, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. You know, <clears throat> I have been trying to locate a particular artist for years. She's the niece of my table tennis coach, Fernando Roberts. And he passed away some years ago, and I have not seen her until today. I'm seeing Pepper for the first time. So it's, it really is a blessing to see Pepper. Um, my table tennis coach spoke about her so many times we're playing, and I always say that, sir, you're not, you're not telling me the truth. You, you're not related to Pepper. Uh, and when I went to the funeral, there was Pepper, and we stood right beside at that moment when um, we said farewell um, to Mr. Roberts. But welcome, Pepper. Pepper has a hit song. You know, push. You know, let's push this promotion. And um, we want to use that spirit to really push to ensure that we can provide for all the kids or children in Jamaica who need the support at this time. Bob Marley has a song that says, every man has a right to decide his own destiny. And King Song says, give children roots, give them wings, give them love, and, and not just material things, but this time we wanna give them something physical. We wanna ensure that every child has a computer, a laptop to work with during this period and no child should be left out. So we here in the Southern United States join wholeheartedly with this uh, promotion, this outreach. We've already started the work. Um, you can, you know, this is not a one shot deal. Um, on December 20th, we have a telethon in place. We already have a number of artists that have confirmed. Um, so we are looking to, 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 to rally in and ensure that we as well give as much support to our children in this endeavor. So I'm gonna be brief. Again, just wanna encourage everybody listening to be a part of this initiative. And as Bob Marley says, one love. Back to you. Well, thank you so very much, Consul General Mayor, uh, for bringing greetings as well as for sharing with us uh, his updates regarding efforts within his jurisdiction in Miami. Uh, so we'll now like to invite Miss Latoya Harris, and she's the Director of Donor and Partnership Management at the National Education Trust. And she'll be sharing with us information in terms of how to send items to schools in Jamaica. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Latoya Harris, thank you.
afternoon, everybody. I will start with the Honorable Favor Williams, my minister, um, Senator the Honorable Leslie Campbell, and I'll say welcome to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs because we work very closely with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Um, C.G. Wilson, uh, you've been great so far. So, and also Deputy C.G. Mr. Rochester, um, a good friend, Mr. Mayor, C.G. Mayor, I should say, Leslie Ann from the Union of Jamaica Alumni Association. I feel like I haven't seen or heard in ages. My, manage, my executive director, Master Phillips Dawkins, who I see on, and I think I saw my very own permanent secretary, Dr. Grace McLean. And to everybody that's logged in and, and um, just tuned in to this initiative. Um, in a very short time, we have really done a lot of work to try and get all hands on deck. And the video you just see is a simplified um, version of what the steps are. The important thing that I want everybody to take away is that before you send anything to Jamaica, just ensure that you email us. We are very responsive when it comes to emails. Um, and the email address is info at net dot org dot jm um, because the form that you need to complete which is a donation form has to be submitted to us in excel and we will send that to you everything is available on our website at net dot org dot jm uh, underneath resources we have not just the the donation guidelines but also the donation form and the re recommended specifications for the devices. Um, E.G. Wilson would have gone through to say that, you know, if you're given devices, you can send them to the consulate and they'll work with us in getting them to Jamaica. But if you choose to send uh, devices for your schools, because I know a lot of entities and diaspora persons are very connected to their schools, so they want to ensure that it gets there. Um, the first thing is to send us that email, complete the donation form. It's critical that donation form is completed with the value of the items. Um, some of the, one of the key things I want to identify since May, and I know we've, we've been getting some complaints. Since May, Customs imp implemented a simplified form for donations that are valued under US $5,000 that, that requires a broker uh, or a consolidated freighters to complete that form for you. This is simply if you're shipping it because your shipping agent can usually, they have an in-house person that can complete it. So if you have ship devices, it's pretty simple. This really affects the persons who we know are taking devices on flights with them. And I want to just point out that if you're taking devices on flights, we need at least three days because we have to send the information on your flight details to customs for them to alert the port of entry that you're coming into. So that's that's some you know timelines that you need to ensure that you, you persons are abiding by. But if you're coming on flights with devices, the devices may be detained um, until you get a customs broker to complete that simplified form. And we're trying to work to see if we can now identify somebody who can do this process in advance. But we have not quite worked that element out. Um, but rest assured that the duties that are waived, and I, I, I need to stress this, the waivers only apply to government fees. They don't apply to private entity fees that they charge. So even though you may have paid to ship, for example, items, um, once they arrive in Jamaica, 
the local shipping agents usually charge something. Um, and those fees cannot be waived by the government. Um, some entities will reduce that cost, but in general, those are not what waivers are applied to. The waivers that are applied on donated items, the duties are waived, the GCT is waived, the special consumption tax is waived. What is not waived is the environmental levy, which tends to be very small amount, like $100, $300, um, Jamaican dollars that is, and 50% of the customs administrative fee. So the other 50% is waived, the rest of it remains. So those are the fees to bear in mind in terms of waivers. And I just hope that everybody has clarity with respect to what exactly um, is waived in the process. Uh, the, the process gets more complicated if you get us involved after the fact. So that's why from day one, we ask that you contact us, sub, submit to us. You can download the donation form from our website. You can submit that in advance and we process um, the paperwork for the waivers. I think that covers just about everything. And as I said, we're very responsive to email. So we just welcome any, any queries you may have. We'll respond um, within a day or two usually. And we just ask everybody to get on board. The consulate in New York is making it quite easy. You don't necessarily have to get involved with the shipping. If you send the devices to them, we will work that out. We, you know, we work that logistics out between us. So this is a great time to get involved. And we just welcome everybody to support as we try to meet the target of 100,000 devices. Thank you so very much, Ms. Harris, for sharing with us how you can uh, ship your items or send your items uh, to the NET. Uh, at the same time, just as a note, uh, to make your life a lot simpler, if you are here in the US, um, you may of course send your items or your contributions, whether in cash or kind, to the consulate here as we already have um, our partnerships and arrangements with the logistical companies, with the NET. Um, so we'll make your life a lot simpler. Um, that's if you're here in the US. Um, you can also make your checks payable to the consulate since we also have arrangements with our suppliers here and that will make everything very seamless. So thank you again, um, Ms. Harris. And now we'll invite Ms. Leslie and Samuel and she's the president of the Union of Jamaican Alumni Association who will be sharing with us remarks. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Rochester, Master of Ceremonies, the Honorable Faval Williams, Min Member of Parliament and Minister of Education, Youth and Information, Senator, the Honorable Leslie Campbell, Minister of State for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Ambassador Gilbert Roberts, Permanent Secretary for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Dr. Grace McLean, couldn't leave you out, Permanent Secretary for the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information. Mrs. Alcyon Wilson, OD, Consul General of Jamaica to New York. Mr. Oliver Mayer, Consul General of Jamaica, in Miami, Florida. Other dignitaries, officials, guests, fellow members of the diaspora, a pleasant good afternoon to you all. So let me begin by saying many, many thanks, um, C.G. Wilson, for inviting the Union of Jamaican Alumni Associations to be a part of this very special event to launch Jamaica's Ministry of Education, Youth and Information and Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trades tablet and laptop initiative, a device for every child. As we are all keenly aware, the coronavirus pandemic has changed our lives in ways that most of us did not anticipate. Yes, we have learned to wear masks and to wash our hands for 20 seconds and to practice social distancing. Sadly, along the way, we have also lost family members and friends, neighbors and co-workers. 
but we have also learned to work from home and we have learned to Zoom. More significantly, however, our lives and those of our children went overnight. From concerns with uniforms being ironed, finding bus fare and lunch money, and having backpacks, pens and pencils, to wondering how our children would learn and teachers would teach in this new virtual environment. The world of smartphones, tablets, laptops, internet access, and not so distant learning is now front and center, no longer a nice to have, but an essential of life, akin to roofs over our heads and food on the table. As devastating as this pandemic is and continues to be, it has opened a door to, yes, I'm going to say it, revolutionize our education process, the way we teach and the way we learn. The way forward is indeed forward, not back. Our lives are indeed changed. So if we choose to seize this moment for the gift that it offers, this tablet and laptop initiative is a step towards what must be our new normal. All of our students, not just some of them, must be given the chance to step into the transformative digital world that will pave the way forward for us as an island nation. Uja represents 70 schools in Jamaica. We, along with our fellow alumni umbrella organizations around the globe, including the Alliance of Jamaican Alumni Associations in Canada and the Jamaica Alumni Association of High Schools in Jamaica, are keenly aware of this need and this opportunity and trying our very best to do our part. And so on behalf of the diaspora and in particular the alumni community, we welcome this occasion to thank the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade in partnership with the Ministry of Education, or maybe the other way around, for providing this pathway to give forward to our country and our schools, but most importantly, to our students. Thank you for allowing us to lend our voice to your efforts by asking our diaspora and friends of Jamaica to give just what you can with the full knowledge and warm feeling that you're doing something really good for our children. As our senior <laughs> said earlier, you just mission centered that education is empowerment, only the educated are free. So my prayer today, ladies and gentlemen, is that we put our hearts, our wisdom and caring, and our dollars towards the future by supporting this tablet and laptop initiative now. And in so doing, ensure that our Jamaican children are able to participate with equal footing on the global playing field. Let us give forward to the future with vision and with love. Because if not us, then who? And if not now, then when? Thank you so much. I want to say thank you to the president of UJA, Ms. Leslie and Samuel. Certainly, we're called to a higher purpose when we know that it's more blessed to give than to receive. And this call is here and it's no. Um, and in that context, um, we are very grateful to our sponsors and donors. And we have many, but today we're featuring one of our donors um, who is going to bring us remarks. And he's been working really hard in terms of promoting the significance of this project. Um, and his name is Mr. Houston Moncure. And he's the managing director at Bluefields Bay Villas. So ladies and gentlemen, although we are virtual, um, let us give a round of applause for Mr. Houston Moncure. Let us invite him as he will give remarks. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, Thank you so much for uh, that warm welcome. Thank you so much for asking us to be a part of this. Uh, when my family uh, founded Bluefield Playville 37 years ago, we were absolutely determined 
that luxury tourism needed to hold up its end, not only with providing jobs, but also with supporting education in Jamaica, which we have been doing for the past 37 years. In fact, just two years ago, we raised $50,000 US to build a, a road going to a basic school in our area, as well as ongoing contributions to the local high school, Belmont Academy, and the, the, uh, the, prim the local primary school. Uh, when Madam Consul General asked me if this would be something that we would support, it was an absolute no-brainer for us. Uh, within about four hours, we developed a way to blast out this opportunity to our list of 20,000 past guests, um, where they could click with uh, one click and make a donation for either a tablet or a laptop by a credit card. Uh, we've seen tremendous success so far. And it personally, it has been absolutely heartwarming to see the tireless efforts of this government trying to meet the needs of the, of the, of the Jamaican citizenry. Uh, putting first and foremost people's health and wellness, but also not having or doing our best to not have a lost year, which has been the danger of this pandemic. Um, I just really hope to see continued success. And I want to thank Madam Consul General for the opportunity to help and to serve Jamaica. Thank you very much. I want to thank Mr. Moncure for that very harm, heart um, warming message. Uh, you know, it 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 gives us this 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 oomph, this 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 feeling of yes, certainly we are working in partnership towards a collective effort. Um, so thank you so very much, sir, for contributing from the heart. Um, we'll now move on to our hardworking portfolio minister, and that is the Honorable Favor Williams. Um, who is the Minister for Education, Youth and Information, who is going to give us an overview with regard to the current state of remote learning in Jamaica. But before she comes, the Minister has two videos. One is courtesy of UNESCO, that will show us what really obtains currently in terms of remote learning and the needs in terms of what the students require, as well as another video um, with regard to Jamaica's situation. So ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Minister, Favor Williams, but before, again, for videos. <laughs> One day I was just around the back of my yard doing some chores and I heard a lot of noise. And I went to my gate to look to see what it was and I saw children running up and down wild. A lot of kids, some riding bicycles, others playing different games. And I was like, wow, and this was school time. I knew that if it wasn't the COVID, they would have been in class. So as a teacher, I took responsibility. I felt responsible because I was like, because they're not able to be with them. They're out there doing that. And I felt sad. And I knew that I had to do something about it. Then the thought came to paint blackboards in this community, put up the work at a designated spot and let parents know. So everybody can just come and access it. Take their phone, take picture and take it back in, inside their, their room for their children. And that's what I did. Early every morning, Mrs. McCoy Phipps and her assistants go to different communities where they religiously write the day's lesson on the community blackboard. The devout teacher says the COVID-19 pandemic has only increased her resolve to reach as many students as possible. You no, know, it's called for teachers to be critical thinkers and proactive. And I can't let my children um, down. It doesn't matter if they're not members of my class. I just know definitely that I am responsible for the nation's children, so I'll have to do something about it. Behind every zinc fence and board lies a lot of children with great potential and ability. Equal access to education. You don't know where these great children are. You just have to make sure that nobody's left behind all their hands and bring them. Every child can learn, every child must learn.
A device for every child, Bridging the Digital Divide is an initiative which we have conceptualized to garner 100,000 devices for 100,000 students who are not on par but are deemed to be in need. The government through e-learning is providing an estimated 150,000 students with devices and we are asking private individuals to match that, in it, that effort uh, by providing the next level of students who are considered in need with devices. These students are all students in state care, an estimated 600 that are have special needs and other students were spread out across the primary and secondary level to begin with. So the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information is extremely delighted to launch, officially launch, one laptop or tablet per child initiative. We are faced with a pandemic. We have no idea how long we will be in it. And so our children can't just remain at home. They have to be engaged with the formal education system. We have put out a number of different approaches and among those is our online approach in which a child will need a device, will need connectivity, and will need um, a data plan in order to connect that way with the education system. We all have been hit by COVID-19 and the education sector is no different. In fact, it probably is one of the hardest hit where our children basically cannot go to school. So school has become an online activity largely or a digital activity. Um, their students during COVID in between March and that period, there are an estimated 35,000 students who just were not accounted for in terms of logging on to any portal. And what we're trying to do with this project is to ensure that at the very least students have a device that the ministry will load with its e-resource app and they can access those resources and participate in the digital space right now. The target of the project is to get 100,000 devices for 100,000 students. Um, this can be in either cash or in kind. Where it's in kind, we're asked that you send their specifications that we have detailed from the Ministry of Education. The tablets, we ask for Android tablets because at this moment, the Ministry's app is not compatible with Apple devices, unfortunately. Um, we need, the recommendation is to have laptops for secondary school students and they're an estimated 30,000 laptops that we're trying to get. And then for the primary school students, we are looking to get uh, roughly 70,000 devices. The private sector organization of Jamaica is very happy to partner with the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information for this campaign, a device for every child. And we have to get these devices into the hands of our children. We cannot leave our children behind. They are our future. So we have to make the investment. So we're happy that the Ministry of Education has asked the PSOJ to come on board and we want to participate. So we're asking all our corporate sponsors, all companies, all individuals who can come on board, please come on board and support. Our children are our future and they depend on us. The government of Jamaica cannot do it on its own. In this time of need, all hands need to be on deck and we need to invest in our beautiful children so that we can set the future for Jamaica in this tough period we face as a country. So at this very moment, we'll now like to invite Honorable Favor Williams, our hardworking portfolio minister 
from the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, who will now uh, give us an overview in terms of the remote learning in Jamaica. Ladies okay. and gentlemen, Minister Williams. Thank you so much. I, I hope you're hearing me well. Thank you, uh, Mr. Master of Ceremonies. Let me begin by acknowledging our Minister of State in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, uh, Senator the Honorable Leslie Campbell. Let me recognize as well our Ambassador Audrey Marks and other excellences. Let me say a big Jamaican hello to Ambassador Gilbert Roberts and the staff, the hardworking staff at the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. Um, to my friend and hardworking Consul General of Jamaica to New York, Mrs. Alcyon Wilson, Mr. Von Roy Rochester, Deputy Consul General, and how can I leave out Mr. Mayor, Consul General to Florida, Ms. Latoya Harris, Director, Donor and Partnership Management, National Education Trust. And I understand that our Permanent Secretary, Dr. Grace McLean is on. Um, I acknowledge you, Dr. McLean. Uh, Ms. Leslie Ann Samuel, President, Union of Jamaican Alumni Association. Ladies and gentlemen, a warm, a very warm Jamaican, um, um, you know, good afternoon to you. I'm delighted to greet you this afternoon as we participate in this tablet and laptop initiative to ensure that all our students in Jamaica have access to technology. When the government announced the suspension of face-to-face -face classes in March this year in response to the COVID-19 pandemic and the move to a mixed modality of teaching and learning that include remote or distance learning using online platforms, there was much concern that many of our children would not be able to participate. The Ministry of Education, Youth and Information indicated, however, that every effort would be made to reach those who did not have immediate access to devices and internet service by arranging to have educational programs on radio and TV and by distributing printed material and making more devices available to our most vulnerable students. Already, we have distributed some 36,000 tablets. These are ones that the government purchased through our, um, our entity called e-learning. These tablets are particularly targeted to our most economically challenged students, those who are on PATH, which is a program of advancement through health and education. And we have significantly completed that distribution across Jamaica to the students, the PATH students in our grades four, five, and six in our primary school. And actually, I'm speaking to you right now from the parish of Hanover. I came here this morning to uh, participate in the handover of tablets to, to, to our primary schools in this parish. We decided that, well, when we looked at the numbers and you heard those numbers earlier on from, from Mrs. Wilson, in terms of the number of students we have in the school system, over 600,000, um, looking at what the government is able to do to date and our plans in the near future, we recognize that we needed to reach out to corporate Jamaica, to individuals, to you in our diaspora and to our international partners to come on board and help us to match what the government is doing. And we believe by the end, well, not just we believe, we've targeted that by the end of this school year, the government should have distributed some 100,000 devices to our teachers and students. Our teachers would have gotten tablets um, a, a few months ago, those were distributed to teachers as part of their agreement that was signed in 2018. We've completed that. And by so doing, we were able to train our teachers on the Google Suite learning management system to be able to create online, uh, online classrooms to meet the students 
to become familiar with, with how to upload the work, how to interact with the students online. And we're seeing good, um, just, just really good take up of that. Um, we look at the statistics and week after week, we see many more of our students coming online and we see that our teachers have been creating many, many, many classes online. But there is still a large gap. There are many of our students in rural Jamaica who are still unable to connect because they do not have the device. There are many communities in which um, internet connectivity is poor or non-existent. And I know that um, we have to do several things at the same time. It's not just the tablet distribution. We have to ensure that the content, the educational content is there for our students. The connectivity is there. Parents are able to afford the connectivity and that we also put in the support um, through our entity called e-learning so that if the child has a, a problem with the device, there is a ready number that they can call to get some help, um, whether it's the device itself, the physical device or the software, and that is in place right now. So we are, we are extremely happy that uh, we responded and we responded as quickly as we did um, to begin that journey, to put the device in the hands of our students. The Ministry of Education, Youth and Information did step forward as well to ensure that um, our schools are connected and we have begun to deploy satellite technology in our schools, especially our rural schools um, across Jamaica to ensure that they have internet connectivity. And we're working on bringing on at least a hundred school schools into the system. We've already done some 40 of them and are moving up pace to bring the others on. I'm delighted to say that since launching this initiative, this one laptop or tablet per child in Jamaica, we are seeing um, many of the companies come on board to support this program. Um, we're appealing to our diaspora now in, you know, on, on, in this virtual setting that, that we have right, right now um, to ask you to hope, open your hearts, open your, your, your minds and to, to what we're doing in Jamaica so that we get all our children on board, engaged with the formal education system. They're able to get access to their lessons, interact with their teachers. Because as you saw in the video, there are many communities in which um, students are still um, you know, running up and down, not engaged. And we have to reach out to these, to these children. We have to begin to understand what's happening in, in the families in Jamaica so that we can get the support of the parents to get the children um, you know, back on board. We understand the hardship that many families are going through and that's why the government has taken this on and um, we're asking the diaspora to partner with us, to help us. You heard the, the numbers in terms of the 100,000 units that we're seeking. Um, it's, it's in collaboration with our companies in Jamaica, as well as with our diaspora partners. We're working in tandem with the National Education Trust. Um, you heard from um, Latoya earlier on. We're broadening our appeal in the continuing push to ensure that every child will have access to the device to allow them to participate in the online learning program and other forms of remote learning now in place. The contribution you're making today goes beyond an immediate response to the COVID-19 crisis and its disruptive effect on education in Jamaica. It really is an investment in the future of Jamaica. We cannot afford to wait for the perfect time when all stars are in alignment to ensure that all our children get access to technology. We're not operating in silos, in isolated spaces. Um, so we have to come together and with all our efforts, I know that we will succeed. Out of this crisis, we have an opportunity to accelerate the push towards digital literacy among our children. 
Of course, distance learning and online courses predated the pandemic, but globally, there's an intensification in the push to get more people operating in the digital space with a greater deal, more comfort. In a world in which artificial intelligence and other aspects of technology are becoming more commonplace, we have a responsibility to prepare our children for their future. The world of work is changing rapidly. They had to tell me the code, you know. Most work was not computer based, but the use of information and communication technologies has more than doubled in the past decade. The way work is organized is changing too, as remote working is now the new norm for more and more persons. What does all this mean for our young people? Among other things, it implies that a familiarity with technology, maths and science will be very useful for many jobs they might do later on. With an improved infrastructure, technology will allow us to give our children regardless of their socioeconomic background, regardless of where they live, it will be able to give them the, the mastery that they need of the technology to be able to um, understand the wide range of opportunities that this can open up to them. It is essential therefore that employers and educators work more closely together to help broaden the horizon for our young people, raise their aspirations, and provide them with the vital work-related knowledge and skills that will help them as they make the transition. It is within this context that I welcome your partnership. We're not providing tablets just for the sake of doing so. It is an investment in the preparation of our children for life. The government's tablet distribution program to students on PATH is almost complete. We are um, in another phase of another initiative in which we are helping non-PATH needy families to get access to a device as well. And just this week, we launched our voucher program in which the government is providing to needy families uh, the equivalent of about 140 US dollars to be able to make a purchase, to, to be able to use that towards the purchase of a tablet or a laptop. So those are some of the other initiatives that are underway. Um, and this is just to let you know what the government is doing and how serious we are about ensuring that all of our students, not some, all of our students have access to be able to gain the skills needed, um, the technology skills needed as they grow older. The 10 year old that we hand a tablet to today is, will be the 20 year old in 2030. And in 2030, the vision for Jamaica is that we become a developed country by 2030. The work has to be done in 2020. It has to begin in 2020. And so we have to equip that 10 year old today so that when he or she becomes a 20 year old, they will um, be so enabled that they can step into the world of work um, fully equipped to be able to deal with um, whatever uh, life throws up at them in the workplace, they will come equipped and skilled uh, uh, in, 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 that, in that year. So we have to begin the work now and that's what we're doing here in Jamaica. As you come on board to make devices available to students and offer support in other ways, I ask you again to work through the National Education Trust to send us your plans and to itemize where you intend to make donations. Uh, um, the Consul General also in her presentation told you you could make donations payable to the Consul General in New York. Uh, we will liaise to ensure that there is no doubling up. We have a database at the ministry in which we've been keeping track of the students who have received these devices so that you don't have one child getting two or three, and then there's another child who hasn't gotten any. So we are, we are working diligently to ensure that indeed we spread it as far as we can and ensure that um, you know, each child gets a device. 
So on behalf of all our children, I want to thank you this afternoon. My heartfelt thanks to Alcyon for, and to Ambassador Marks for organizing this. I'm sure there are many, many other persons who are involved in, um, in, in this initiative. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for stepping forward and taking on the call to ensure that all our children in Jamaica have access to technology um, so that it, uh, it will enrich their learning, it will accelerate learning. And at the end of the day, um, when they leave the education system um, to go on to work or entrepreneurship or wherever they go, they will be that much better equipped to deal with um, the life skills that are required. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for being on this call today and for the commitment that you're making to Jamaica. Thank you so much. I want to say thank you. A very big thank you to Minister, Minister Favor Williams for giving us such a very clear picture with, with regard to the current state of the remote learning situation in Jamaica, as well as for, well, letting us know what is required. At this stage in the program, um, I will now do the vote of thanks. And if you will allow me to once again acknowledge a few of our distinguished uh, members who are joined in live. And of course, we have to acknowledge first and foremost, our patron and host, Mrs. Alcyon Wilson, our Consul General here in New York. We, we also have to again acknowledge and say big up to Minister Favor Williams. Uh, she's working really hard and she's from our Ministry of Education, Youth and Information. We also have to say a special thank you to Senator the Honorable Leslie Campbell, Minister of State in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, uh, who gave greetings on behalf of Senator the Honorable Kamina Johnson Smith, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. Ambassador Marcia Gilbert Roberts, our Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. Dr. Grace McLean, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information. Mr. Oliver Mayer, Consul General of Jamaica in, uh, in Miami. Ms. Latoya Harris, Director, Donor and Partnership Management at the NET. Ms. Leslie and Samuel, President of the Union of Jamaican Alumni Association. Mr. Houston Monroe, Managing, Managing Director at Bluefields Bay Villas. Other esteemed sponsors and friends of Jamaica. And I'm pretty sure Best Buy is somewhere listening also. Welcome. Uh, distinguished ambassadors joining us from near and far, including Ambassador Audrey Marks. Staff at the consulate, including our technical team uh, from Jampro. Fellow Jamaicans or massive in the diaspora, esteemed friends of Jamaica, ladies and gentlemen, once again, pleasant afternoon. So today I'm honored to present the vote of thanks for our joint virtual launch of the tablet and laptop initiative. And this project is entitled A Device for Every Child, Bridging the Digital, the Digital Divide, which is under the auspices of the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, in close partnership with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, as well as, of course, the consulate here, consulate of Jamaica in uh, New York, and of course, the National Education Trust. First, we have to say thank you, God, from whom all blessings flow, as well as for allowing all of us to be here today. As our distinguished ministers and other esteemed speakers have so clearly impressed on our hearts and minds, this initiative is geared towards our collective support for the acquisition of remote learning devices so as to ensure that no student in Jamaica is left behind. In this regard, allow me to thank Mr. Corey Wright, our Vice Counsel for praying and blessing this, today's proceedings. Uh, and again, we have to thank our ministers and we see them working assiduously. So I wanna say thank you again to Minister Faber Williams. Um, Besides the clear picture, we have a clear mandate and we don't want to contribute or be complicit to a lost uh, generation. These were also the words of our Consul General. So you see there is unity regarding the message. We want to thank the Consul General again. And 
it's not, we have to say this. We want to thank her for her vision, her exemplary leadership, not just in planning and organizing, but executing this successful launch and doing so with a heart of compassion. I want to thank you very much, Consul General. We want to also thank uh, the Consul General in Miami, um, Mr. Oliver Meir, for bringing greetings as well as for marshalling efforts in his jurisdiction in Miami. A special thank you goes out to Mr. Toya Harris. Uh, and thank you for giving us uh, tips in terms of how to actually ship items. And again, ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, this, is, this would be for persons who are not within our jurisdiction and within the US. Um, want, the government of Jamaica wants to make your life as easy as, as cheesy. <laughs> so <laughs> the easier, the better. So if you are here in the US and you feel led, you feel impressed, um, please reach out to the Consulate General of Jamaica here in New York and we'll make sure that your contribution gets to the children in Jamaica. We already have the partnerships and the logistical arrangements lined up, um, so we'll help you make it happen. Uh, to our invaluable uh, Miss Leslie and Samuel, our president of UJA, we know that you're going to not only disseminate the information among the Jamaican diaspora, since you are the president of the Jamaica Alumni Association, the Union of Jamaican Alumni Association, but also impress upon them the significance of not only giving one, but if they can give two or three remote learning devices. We have to say a heart, a big heart thank you to our invaluable sponsors and friends. Words truly can't convey just how grateful we are. The seeds you plant here today or tomorrow with your sponsorship and support will ensure that no student in Jamaica is left behind. In so doing, most assuredly and successfully bridge this current digital divide and achieve the goal to empower and to free each student one tablet and laptop at a time. In this regard, allow me to say, to, um, to recognize and commend the following individuals and institutions or organizations who would have already pledged their sponsorship and support to this project. Best Buy, the number one place, and here I'm doing some promo for, for Best Buy, the number one place for expert service and true to form, we can tell you this, uh, on B to the price. Our dear friend um, of, this, of the Consul General, Mr. Ray Goldburn, who is the executive producer at BET Networks. He is not only pledged, but he's also marshalling his other friends within the entertainment industry and other celebrities to come on board. Another dear friend of our CG, uh, Mr. Houston Moncure, who spoke with us or who spoke to you earlier. And he's the managing director at Bluefields Bay Villas. Uh, we agree with you, sir, wholeheartedly that it's a no brainer <laughs> We have to come on board. Another friend who is more like a sister to the Consul General, and that's Madam Pepple. Um, who is from the group Pepper and Salt. Sorry. Salt and Pepper, my apologies. <laughs> <laughs> who has not only pledged her support, but is also going to be marshalling, uh, rallying her celebrity friends to come on board. Mr. Mark Jerome, president of the Bronx-based Monroe College, who is not only another sponsor of this project, but who, by the way, earlier this year was awarded the Distinguished Award uh, Consul General Heritage Awards. And this was because he would have been so instrumental in terms of helping stranded Jamaicans here in the US uh, earlier during the year as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. And also another luminary, another distinguished Jamaican who held the fort, that was Dr. Rudolph C. Willis. And he's um, not only a doctor in terms of medical doctor, but he's a doctor in terms of you know ensuring that um, Jamaicans receive support right across the spectrum. And he's also partnering with us. So thank you very much, Dr. Willis. Mr. Bobby Stone, a dear friend of the Consul General. Uh, in fact, um, he's um, the Consul General's brother. He would have, the moment he heard the call from the Consul General, he said, yes, I am in, and he contributed. We want to also recognize Dr. Avril Keldo, president of Cedric Titus High School Alumni Association. And I'll just list a few more names. <laughs> we have Miss Harriet Zeller, president of the American Jewish 
community. These are but few of the many corporate friends and sponsors. And I, and I say friends first because they have formed a relationship with the Consul General and they are not only sponsoring, but they are partnering. And that is the heart and the essence of this entire initiative. Last but not least, to you all, our attendees, tuned in live on this, our very first virtual launch of the tablet and laptop initiative. And the project, as you, all, as you already know, is a device for every child, bridging the digital divide. Thank you for tuning in today, ladies and gentlemen. And I will just quickly say that I will be inviting our Consul General again. By the way, I am yours truly, Von Roy Rochester, the Deputy Consul General here at the Consulate. Consul General? Thank you, DCG. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I really wanna thank you for, um, for, for just listening and being with us today. Um, but here's what, where I say that if the spirit move you, please donate. Donate whatever you can. We'll accept $10, $5, $15. $50, $50 would be half of what one tablet would cost. If you can do 100, God bless you. If you can do 200, God bless you. We do know that you're going through a difficult time. But if the spirit move you, please, I beg you, please donate. Our children are dependent on us. And by God, we will not allow them to fail. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and please have a good afternoon.